Hi everyone, uh, my name is Emmanuel Obodo. I'm a specialist biomedical scientist and I'm also a lecturer in biomedical science here in the UK. I completed my PhD in biomedical science. I have extensive experience working in NHS as a specialist biomedical scientist. And for many years, I've helped a number of people secure their dream job as a specialist biomedical scientist and also as a biomedical scientist. I'm here to help you to navigate through interview questions and thereby increase your chances of getting a job as a biomedical scientist. I ask that you like, share, comment and subscribe our page. Thank you. Now, um, today we are going to be looking at the interpretation of blood group and antibody screening and we are also going to look at the factors that are fed them. Before I continue, I had made a video on sample uh, validity. I had also made a video in terms of sample acceptance. Please go and watch the video because every video that I've made, please do watch it because I'm taking them step by step so that you can understand my current videos, okay? Anyway, uh, remember this, this channel for me is not just for you to get a job, it's also for you to be able to be able to work effectively so that once you get that job you can easily fit in so when you watch the video don't just think it's about the interview the the informations here will help you to be able to fit in properly when you get that job and it will help you to work as though you've been working in the uk for a very long time okay anyway so let's get into it So I'm going to just give us a little background. So remember that blood group A has antigen A and antibody B. Blood group B has antigen B, antibody A. Blood group AB has antigen A and B and no antibody. Blood group O has no antigen A, no antigen B, but antibody A and B. Remember that when we talk about this antigen and antibodies, on this occasion, we're talking about immunoglobin M, not immunoglobin G. Remember, I did mention to you that every blood has antigens but that is in terms of immunoglobin g antigens but in terms of immunoglobin m antigen some of them have some of them don't so that's example so the example i'm giving here is immunoglobin m antigens or antibody so we're going to see that when we go to the next cell in more detail okay so now remember like i've told you before so igm is what we use when we are when we are in igm is what blood group is measuring when you talk about forward grouping and reverse grouping what is measuring is igm but when you talk about antibody screening what is being measured is igg okay please i want you to differentiate that but remember once again whether igm or igg they are found in the plasma and the antigens are found on the surface of the blood cells or any other cell okay so let's look at the interpretation properly okay remember that the, these are anti sera that is embedded in this. So, like I've told you guys before, what we do here is card grouping and card antibody screening. Okay. So, in the card grouping, so you can see that this is anti A, anti sera A, anti sera B, anti sera D. Okay. So, that is what is embedded in this card from one to four. Okay. Then, when you come to A1 and B1, what is there? There is nothing that is better, it's just a gel. But in that gel, so the analyzer will take B cell and put in, um, in B cell well and A cell and put, and put in A cell well, then put the patient plasma. That's why you can see the patient plasma here, okay? So again, when it comes to the antibody screening, the analyzer will take the cell one and put on cell one, cell two and put on cell two, cell one. Remember that this is IgG cells, okay? Maybe like and that, that has these cells, they will contain different antigens. So you can see once they contain different antigens and they are put here, then the analyzer will not take the patient plasma and put it. That's why if you look at here again, you see that this is a patient plasma. So this patient plasma then will react if it is if there's any antigen here that the patient plasma contain the antibody that will cause a reaction. But if there is none, it will be negative, like you are seeing here. And once again, remember here this is a reverse grouping where we are testing the patient plasma against the known A or B cell. And again, you can see that this is a patient plasma. But when you come here, you can't see any plasma from one to four. There's no plasma. What you are seeing is that this is anti sera okay, that is put in there. What you're going to see, rather, it will be the patient cell. So you can see the cells up here, down, 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 down. They are the cells. That's the patient cells. Anyway, the secret to this is that once the cells float up, that is positive. Once it is down, it is negative. So the strength of the positive, okay, is determined on how 
it floats up. Like this one completely floats up. That is why it's 4 plus. The same thing is applicable here. That's why it's 4 plus. But you can remember, you can get weak reaction. You can get 1 plus, 2 plus, 3 plus, pluses as the case may be. Okay? Now, so this patient, because it has, it reacted on antisera A, meaning it has antigen A. And because it reacted on B cell, meaning it has antibody B, it means that this patient is blood group A. But because there's no any reaction on anti D, meaning it does not have antigen D, it means that this person is blood group A negative. Remember that antigen D is what that determines whether the blood group will be positive or negative. And because it's absent here, this person is A negative. So let's look at this one. You're going to say that this person is AB negative because there's a reaction in A, anti A and anti B, meaning this person has antigen A, antigen B. And of course, there's any antibody here from what you can see is negative, okay? Antibody screening is also negative and there's no any antigen D. Therefore, this person is what? AB negative and antibody screening is negative. Now, let's look at this one. So this one now has antigen B because it reacted on anti B. And then it has antibody A because it reacted on the word A cell, A1 cell, okay? Then look at the antigen D. You can see it reacted on anti D, meaning it has antigen D. Because, because of this antigen D, you say that this person is B positive. And again, you can see the antibody screening is negative. Now, let's look at this one. This one is baby card. It's different from the previous one that I've shown you. What I would like to say here, because they may ask you this question. Baby, a newborn baby, does not have antibody A or antibody B. You know, the immunoglobin M antibodies we're talking about, they don't have it. Their body have not made the antibody. And because of that, you can't detect it. Because of that, we don't use the adult card. So we use baby card. So when it comes to the baby's card, what we are measuring is just what is on the surface of the red blood cell. So we are measuring the anti, whether it is antigen A, antigen B, or antigen D, as the case may be. The only thing we do extra is to check if there's any antibody on the surface of the red blood cell of that baby will now do direct antiglobulin test which some people call direct cum test okay so we do poly specific so in terms of poly specific means if it, this person if there is igg or complement like c3d complement okay this place will be positive but if there is none of them it will be what negative whenever if this become positive is always id to do monospecific so that you can know what is actually positive whether it is igg or c3d you know positive anyway that's by the way so this is a baby card and you can see there's no any antigen a no antigen b no antigen d therefore this is o negative so this patient is this baby is o negative and dat of course is negative now let's look at this one so this is or this patient is already uh, like i've already explained before is a negative but you can see this one is this patient has antibody screening positive and because this antibody screening is positive and look at the strength is plus two okay being plus two because it didn't float very up so that is i mean the strength is weak so it's plus two but again because of this is positive it means that there is an that a, one of the antigens or maybe any of the maybe one or two antigens present in this cell one okay that the patient plasma contain the antibody that's why it reacted so when when you see antibody screening positive you then do antibody panel remember you only do antibody identification if the antibody screening is positive so this is one of the example antibody screening positive the next thing is antibody panel because antibody panel is where you can be able to identify the particular antibody the patient has got not at this point you don't know okay so Let's look at the factors that can affect um, blood group and antibody screening, okay? Now, number one is codaglutinin. Codaglutinin can affect it. So if you've not watched my video on codaglutinin, go and watch it. I think you will see it on Raise MCHC, okay? Go and watch it. You are going to see the things I said about codaglutinin. So codaglutinin can affect it. Code antibodies can affect it. In terms of the code antibody, you might be looking at things like maybe some of the antibodies that react better at cold temperature, like four degree. You see it now. So if you are running, if you are running blood group and antibody screening that is incubated at 37, you might get negative results. It does not mean that that antibody is not present, but because it is code antibody. You can see this mainly in terms of code anti M. But that would be a different story. So another thing that can affect it is transfusion. In terms of the transfusion, if somebody, for example, who is O positive, 
receive O negative blood. So what is going to happen now? In the patient system, there is D antigen, which is the patient O positive, and there is D antigen negative, which is the donor cell O negative. So when you do the blood group, you're going to see that when it comes to the D antigen, the patient cell will go up while the donor cell will come down. So that will lead to a, what we call dual population. I'm going to show you that. Anyway, that's how transfusion can affect, uh, can affect blood group. Then let's look at in terms of complement. Complement can also affect blood group and antibody screening. Things like C3D, okay, it can affect the antibody screening. Even the antibody panel, it can affect it as well. It will give you reaction all through. It is always hard to get, you know, the antibody screening done, even the blood group done and the antibody panel done. So it will require a different special technique to be able to get the result. Another thing that can affect blood group, you know, in terms of age and this can affect mainly in reverse grouping when you are talking about antibody a antibody b you know the way somebody with blood group a has antibody b so if the person start getting old that antibody b may start diluting and that is where you can get it and of course some treatment as well can affect that very uh, antibody a antibody b and that can as well lead to that you know first reaction where you are thinking that this person is a positive or b positive but unfortunately you are not getting anything in the reverse grouping what that can result what that can lead to that is mainly when somebody starts aging another thing is drug like daratumumab okay so this daratumumab can affect the blood group and antibody screen so once the somebody you know has is on this medication it can affect it it can get reaction all through okay and that will be very difficult again it will require a special technique for you to be able to get the blood group and antibody screening and this is because i think scientifically that this drug you know they kind of um react or bind with cd38 which is lessly expressed in the red blood cells okay and also they can max you know these very antibodies and you find it that's why you can find it difficult you know to detect any of the uh, maybe blood group or antibody screening and that is where someone can get something like pan agglutination or pan reactive in all the words then another thing that can affect blood group and antibody screening is contamination okay so of course if you if you get any abnormal result you are not able to determine the group of that patient you know so of course you can ask the world to repeat that sample because you are querying contamination and of course another thing if you don't store the materials very well of course it will affect the result there's a i'm going to make a special video on weak and partial d but again weak or partial d can you know make you to you know query you know the group of that very patient and of course that might need confirming so yeah this can also affect auto antibody can also affect you know the um the blood group and the antibody screening you know and as well i want you to know that even though we are referring to blood group and antibody screening some of these factors can affect cross matching like in terms of the drug you know, that a tumor map can affect cross matching pan reactive or true that's where you're going to get so it will look like it's not compatible it may be compatible because of the drug is interfering you're going to get positive reaction or true and nothing that can uh, uh, complement like c3d can also affect cross matching and of course code agglutinin can also affect cross matching so please do take note of that as well now let's look at the example this has shown us a dual pop but i want you to say if you look at this very well, you're going to say that there's no cell down even though the analyzer have said that this person has a dual population suggesting that this person have received another type of blood but if you look at it this there's nothing here so this is the kind of thing when you get it, you need to repeat the sample the, the analyzer is just making this up because there's nothing down here you can't see any cell here so yeah but this is one of the examples so once it happened like this it says dual pop meaning if there are two population of the cell but on this occasion that's not the situation you will see the weak situation too so you can see that here as well the antibody screening is positive and of course you can do panel but this one we see this kind of result you repeat it because there is no cell down dual pop means there has to be two population of cells so this example of the dual population i was trying to explain to you. so you can see obviously there is cell down here okay so that's what i'm trying to say this person obviously is o positive maybe this person has been transfused with o negative blood that is why that o negative is down while the patient cell is up remember that o negative does not have d antigen that is why this antigen d that o negative donor cell that is in the patient's blood body did not react with this anti d but the patient cell reacted with anti d so that's why you have it. the patient cell up and the donor cell down okay so this is what we call dual pop so this is a typical example where 
blood transfusion have caused a discrepancy okay the word the key word is discrepancy okay just in case if they ask you factors that can lead to a discrepancy in the blood group and antibody screening they are those factors that i've mentioned okay but now we're talking about how transfusion can affect it now this is an example of how codaglutinin can affect this can lead to discrepancy in blood group and antibody screening see there is reaction everywhere so you can't get anything until that antibody is emitted so yeah this is a typical example of codaglutinin affecting the blood group and antibody screening so this is a discrepancy okay another thing that can affect it in terms of maybe like codaglutinin like i've mentioned or C3D, or there are, uh, the drug, like I've mentioned as well, they can lead to what we call pan-reactive in terms of antibody screening or antibody panel. So once you see reaction all through like this, if it is not known specific in antibody panel, it could be due to any of these factors like I've mentioned. Please do take note of that, okay? So this is another discrepancy where you get a reaction all through. So another thing, like I mentioned C3D, remember I mentioned C3D, so you can see again there is reaction all through, there is a pan-reactive all through in all the cells. So this example where the C3D, you know, is present, the patient has the C3D and is giving you positive in all the wells. So these are the things that can affect blood group and antibody screening. What I'm going to suggest is that you should go and look at everything that I've mentioned think about them in detail and go through this video over and over so that you can be able to make use of all the information that i've provided thank you so very much till i come back away again remember